Hi guys, so uh, in today's lesson we're going to be looking at the 1916 Rising and the actual Rising taking place. So in our last lesson we looked at the planning of the Rising and you know all of the different organizations that were involved, the main leaders who were involved in the planning of the Rising and why they thought this was a good time for a Rising. Today what we're going to be looking at is how it actually happened during the rising itself now although the rising is incredibly famous within irish history it's a very short rising it only lasts five days so we will actually go through the entire events of the rising today and then for the rest of the week we'll be looking at kind of the well some sources from there tomorrow and then uh on thursday's lesson we'll be looking mainly at the results or consequences of the rising but just to get us back into the right headspace so we're thinking about uh what we looked at in last week's lesson, I want you to think about back about what we said about the planning of the rising. And we said it was going very well, the planning, but then they ran into a number of different problems. There was a few difficulties that the uh, organizers of the rising ran into just before the rising was due to take place. So I want you to think, can you remember any of those difficulties, what they were, okay? And just kind of think about them. I don't want you to write anything down. You don't need to write anything down here. Just have a good idea in your head what were the difficulties that they ran into and why were they such big issues okay so maybe pause here and take a few seconds to think about that okay so the issues that we talked about in terms of them running into issues with the rising there were three main issues the first of all being that the odd so the ship that they were using to um collect guns from and arms uh well, sorry, and ammunition from uh, Germany, which was bringing in thousands of rifles, uh, 10 machine guns, you know, and was really going to be very uh, instrumental in the uh, how, in making the rising somewhat successful. And the odd is captured off the coast of Kerry, so it never actually arrives. So these men don't have the armaments that they expected they would have. Um, at the same, in a similar time, a man named Roger Casement, so Casement was the man who had been sent to Germany to procure these guns, he is captured and arrested and brought sent to prison in England. So he's one of the main strategic leaders of the Rising, and they've lost him. So we've got all captured, so the weapons being on. Uh, we've got one of the main leaders being arrested, and finally we have uh, the issue with the volunteers. So we know that the IRB leaders had tricked Owen McNeil into allowing the volunteers to be involved in the rising by creating the forged castle document which had said that uh, the british forces were going to get rid of the irish volunteers he finds out that it's forgery and he is furious he doesn't like the fact that he's been tricked he's been duped by these men and so on easter sunday morning when all of the rising is supposed to begin owen mcneil publishes has a article published in the sunday Independent or Sunday Times, and uh, Sunday Independent, um, calling off the volunteer involvement. So you can imagine all these men who are just about to go out and fight, and suddenly they say, "What? The volunteers have been told not to come." Okay, um, so you know this is really. Sp uh, set things off to a bad start and the rising doesn't start on Easter Sunday as it's been planned it's been planned as kind of a symbolic gesture Easter Sunday marks the day that uh, Jesus Christ supposedly rose from the dead and here they are trying to show that Ireland was rising from the ashes rising back to life uh, but it doesn't start on Easter Sunday and obviously the IRB have to now make a very very quick decision or very you know get down to planning because suddenly you know with this article in the newspaper the british are going to become aware that something maybe was being planned and they meet and they decide that they're not going to give up they're not going to you know give in they are still going to try and have their rising and the rising is organized for the very next day and so it starts on easter monday okay so that's just a brief outline of where we're at at the moment we're just about to go into the rising itself starting on easter monday so what i want you to be able to do by the end of this lesson is understand the reason for why the rising went ahead be able to outline some of the major events of the rising and be aware of the main leaders of the rising okay so you want the major events the main people and just a good understanding of why it's actually happening 
Now, we had touched on this issue just before the end of the last lesson. We talked about blood sacrifice. Okay. Now, just before I go into discussing this, just a few questions on the board. So you're going to be writing down the answers to these questions, and this is going to be task one, which is being submitted for today's lesson. So what is meant by blood sacrifice? Roughly how many soldiers took part in the Rising? Who was commander-in-chief of the Rising? And where was he situated during the Rising? What building was he in? And name three other important places that were taken over during the Rising. Um, so a blood sacrifice, they come together on Easter Sunday and are kind of trying to decide how are we going to deal with this? We're going to have to have the Rising go ahead. Are we going to have the Rising go ahead? And they come to the decision that yes, the best thing that they, for them is to have the Rising go ahead. And they do this on the idea of what Pierce often talked about, a blood sacrifice. And Pierce essentially believed that it was important for the people to see them standing up and fighting and giving their lives for what they believed in. And by doing so, he believed that they could spur a new sense of loyalty and nationalism amongst the general public for their cause. So by dying for their cause, they were going to get the public on their side. When people seen this beautiful, this what he would have described as a beautiful image of them going out and fighting and dying for what they believed in, he believed that then the rest of the country would stand up and fight. So this is the concept of what's going on. They're not going out there and under the, any misunderstanding that they might actually win, at least not the leaders. Um, and so when they march out on... Um, Easter Monday, there's only 1,500 soldiers, so 1,500 soldiers is a very small amount of soldiers to be involved in something like this. You know, it's not the 1,500 people standing up against the British Empire is quite a, you know, it's a very small number. Um, a lot of these are volunteers now, okay? They are volunteers who have decided to ignore uh, Owen McNeil's orders. They've decided, that, no, this is what they want to do. They want to be involved in the Rising and are going to ignore McNeil's orders. Um, now, there is some benefits here. It's a bank holiday, which means the number of soldiers in the city on Easter Monday is actually quite low. Okay, It's much lower than it would be on a normal day, on a non-bank holiday day. So they use this uh, opportunity uh, to kind of get a good foothold within certain areas. Okay. Um, They march through the city. People aren't overly supportive of them, and honestly, a lot of people seem to not really understand what was going on at the start. So, Patrick, Patrick Pierce, or Patrick Pierce, is the commander in chief of the Rising, and he situates himself in the GPO, the General Post Office, you know, we'll know it on O'Connell Street. And the GPO becomes the headquarters of the Rising itself, this is where all the main commands and main decisions are going to be made. And he situates himself there. But to start off the rising, he goes, he stands outside the GPO and he reads the proclamation of Irish Republic. Okay, and you will, um, you'll be well aware of this document, you will have seen it before. It's in your booklets there. We will look at it again in a bit more detail. But the proclamation is basically them standing, him standing outside and declaring that Ireland is now a republic and they are going to fight for it right now. Now, people if you didn't really believe what was happening and if you imagine it imagine you're walking down the street and then some person stands there and starts shouting this proclamation that they are going to make country change the whole political system of a country it's quite hard to believe so people don't, uh, kind of stand around and watch they're a bit bemused by it they're not really sure what's happening some people think it's just a play or something like that but soon afterwards it becomes quite evident that these men are going to be forcibly taking GPO and are going to, it's going to be a some violence happening. Now, the GPO is not the only place that is taken. There's a number of buildings that are taken. The GPO is the one we kind of know most. It's uh, still a very iconic building within the capital. It's you can I'm sure a lot of you will be aware that if you go to the GPO, you can still see marks along the columns outside from the bullets that were fired during this. Um, during the 1916 Rising. But there's a number of other places that are taken, be taken as well, and it's important to be aware of this, that they are taking a number of buildings, and there's a lot of strategy going into what they're doing, right? They're strategically choosing important buildings around the city and with important locations so that they can have and control a large area of the city. So places that are taken are the Royal College of Surgeons on Stevens Green, 
um, which is still where the Royal College is based. Uh, so the College of Surgeons is taken. Uh, they also take over Stephen's Green Park itself, and that is held for some time. Countess Markovich, um, one a very very important woman from Irish history, she's fighting on the on Stephen's Green as one of the as the leader of Saint Green of the of Stephen's Green. Um, Michael Mallon is in charge of the uh, College of Surgeons, and they put up a good stand here. Other places are taken at Jacob's Biscuit Factory. Now, the Biscuit Factory is not there anymore. It used to be a massive building situated kind of in between um, Stephen's Green and St. Patrick's Cathedral. An absolutely huge building, and it's taken under command by Thomas McDonough, who is uh, one of the leaders who signed the proclamation. The Four Courts, which you'll be well aware, the Four Courts comes up a lot in Irish history. Okay, it comes up again in Civil War, and the Four Courts is taken uh, under the command of Edward Daly. It's incredibly violent what happens in the Four Courts. Um, there's huge amounts of violence there, and it's a very, but it's a very strategically chosen location. Uh, Boland's Mill down near Grand Canal Dock, and you'll still see the walls of Boland Mill down there. You can still see just if you go down Grand Canal. There's a big, there's a side of a building built out of stone, and um, you know it looks quite out of place because the docks will be very modern. This is quite, it's clearly an old building. You can see Bolton's Mills painted on the side of it, and that was taken under command of Eamon de Valera, and de Valera is going to be incredibly important when we get to in the War of Independence, when we get to the Civil War, we get he's president of Ireland, and later in the 60s and 70s, de Valera is. Hugely, hugely important. Um, just be very, so just keep his name in mind. Okay, he's kind of he leads the War of Independence later on, but he takes over the Boland's Mill uh, building uh, during the Rising. We also have other buildings: the South Dublin Union, the Mendicity Institute, and there's more information about all of these on the in the booklet. Okay, so they're taking over a huge amount of the city. And if you look in the booklet, there is a map there, and you'll see in the green space on the map, these are all the different areas, and they're kind of creating a that the uh, rebels take over, and they're kind of creating a circle around the center of the city. So they're controlling everything inside the circle, and they're defending things coming from the outside. Um, so, you know, they start off quite well. It's quite a strong start. They get the buildings that they want, they're taking good control of the city, okay, but things we kind of know aren't going to go 100% to plan. So you might want to pause here and just kind of look back at those questions and answer those questions before we move on. Okay, so the British reaction then. So obviously these men come and they take over the city, they start taking over the city and they do quite well on the Monday, mainly because the British army isn't prepared and there's not very many soldiers there to deal with this. The British, however, are quick to react. So while there's only 400 British soldiers in around Dublin on Easter Monday, by Tuesday evening, the rebels are outnumbered by over 5,000 men. So you're looking at near enough to 7,000 British soldiers now in the city. So you can see how quickly they are reacting. And these people are coming from both the Curra, so the Curra camp which is based in Kildare, and being sent over from England also. And they're here to try and quash this rising as quickly as possible. And you'll remember now that Britain is also in the midst of World War One, so they don't really have time for this to be a long drawn out rising. They're going to try and deal with it as quickly as they can so they can focus on the war. Um, so they really throw a lot of men at it and they also send over a huge uh, gunboat, a huge uh, called the Helga. So the Helga is the, what's the, is the boat pictured at the bottom there, and the Helga is, becomes very, very important because they can now fire upon the buildings, and it does, it shells the centre of Dublin, um, it was able to shell the GPO, so they're firing huge, you know, from a warship against the rebels in the GPO. So this is a very, very quick and very, very strong reaction from the British. Over the course of the next week, so, <clears throat> sorry, from Tuesday up over Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and into Friday, the British forces are basically moving around, defeating garrison by garrison, defeating area by area. Okay, so it takes a few days, but they are going in and they are defeating the rebels in each different area. Now there are definitely places where the rebels put up a huge, a very significant stand. One such place being Mount Street Bridge, 
where 13 rebels are said to have held back over uh, 1,750 soldiers for hours and basically taken out so wounded or killed 231 people so that's a huge accomplishment and you can see the strategic thinking of the rebels and where they were placing themselves and where they were controlling the situation as much as they could um, by Friday however by Friday evening the rise has been going on for about five, it's about five days now and it becomes clear to Pierce and to everyone that it's no longer going to be that they've lost essentially they can't fight any longer it's just going to be people dying if they continue to fight um, and so Pierce officially surrenders on the Friday um, oh, sorry on Saturday morning sorry Pierce officially surrenders on Saturday morning so you know decisions kind of made late on Friday on Saturday morning Pierce surrenders and he surrenders unconditionally so a lot of time what you'll see with uh, in war is if someone surrenders like, Look, we will surrender but we want you know these are conditions we'll surrender if we give us this we the Pierce uh, here surrenders unconditionally. You know, the British probably aren't going to give any conditions, and need the violence needs to stop at this stage. And they've made their stand. They've made their blood sacrifice here, or they've at least made some of it, or caused the blood sacrifice. And um, the city is absolutely in ruins. Uh, the city is pretty much destroyed. Um, there is looting going on. There is. The casualties uh, are mainly civilian, so the people of Dublin aren't overly happy with what's actually after happening. You know, they've been living a fairly peaceful life, not being too well, too much dragged into this war that's going on abroad, and now their own city is being absolutely destroyed. And as the rebels are rounded up, there is quite a lot of venom towards them. But we will go into that in a little bit more detail uh, later in the week when we look at the results. Um, so that is essentially the story of the battles of the rising, the main issues that went on. Now, if you want to get a bit more information, so obviously pause here if you need to to answer those questions before you move on. Alright, so if you want to, um, what do we find task to look into a little bit more detail on some of these uh, battles and some of these important areas. So further tasks, so this is task three. So task one was the questions on the blood sacrifice slide, and part two was or task two was the questions on the British reaction slide, and part three is go back and do a little bit more kind of looking information up. So if you go into your booklet and you'll see, I think it's on page eight of the booklet, just above the map, um, you will see, uh, just on page eight, you'll see that I've uh, listed the different areas that were taken. Okay, and there's different videos for each of them. Okay, except for Jacob's Pesca Factory, for some reason I couldn't get a video for that. Okay, but you'll see in blue all the different links there. What I want you to do is I want you to watch I mean, at least two of the videos that are linked there. And for each of the ones that you watch, I want you to write two to three bullet points about what happened in that place. So if you watch the one on the Royal College of Surgeons, then you write two to three bullet points about what happened to Royal College of Surgeons, and you you know, just give me a bit of insight into what happened during that battle. Some things you might consider, we don't have to stick to these ones, will be how many soldiers were there, why it's an important location to take, who was the leader of the rebels there, but that's just some suggestions. I don't, you might not actually be given all of that information in each of the videos. You just need to go and, you know, that's just a suggestion where the kind of information I'm looking for. Okay, guys, so that is pretty much it for today. So if you have any questions, please just let me know by email, and I will see you later in the week.